Hi and welcome back to the next chapter in the build of the Warbirds Replicas Fogger Wolf 190. As you can see, this video is being carried out in my office as opposed to the workshop. Why? Because I've taken all the videos of what I've been doing next and I've had to cut and slice them. So um, I've done this as an introduction to the videos rather than me jumping straight onto the, the workbench. It'll become obvious when you look at the video, but this one is primarily about starting to paint the model. Hope you enjoy it. Right, so starting off with the ceiling of the surfaces. What I've done, I'm still undecided about the or was undecided about what to use for sealing. Um, options are the uh, floor varnish uh, approach, which mm, I've decided against. So it boils down really to two. It's the Easy Coat water-based laminating covering or car primer undercoat, which I used earlier to see how that went on and I've compared the two and what I've done is I've sprayed the underside of the wing with the car undercoat primer not a very heavy coat just one to basically the whole point of this is to seal the surface of the of the brown paper and when it's sprayed on you can hear how rough it is because obviously all the, the fibres are sticking up the brown paper. If I rub my hand, you can hear that. Now, on this section here, I've rubbed it down very slightly, very quickly with this um, sanding block, which is a foam sanding block. Very quickly, just rubbed it over like that. And the difference if I run backwards and forwards across there, you can hear the difference. So just to prove that, I'm just going to sand this down. You can actually hear it as I'm sanding it, it gets quieter. There. Now, so this bit here, this bit here, and that's the difference. So that texture now, that surface is ripe for painting my uh, colours on top of and it's sealed. Now why am I looking at other methods other than, than that? Because that seems to work really well. Well mainly because you've got to be careful with using those sprays. They're acrylic, but they still stink and they still give off nasty fumes. So you can't really do that indoors. You have to go outside and if you haven't got a workshop that is easily um, sectioned off so overspray won't get everywhere, you've got a problem. So what I've done is I've, as I said a moment ago, I've used the Easy Coat laminating resin on this and you can tell but I've got a similar finish there, very similar. But the advantage is there's no smell, brush applied, it's very quick, um, very easy to apply. Disadvantages, I would say that it's going to be marginally heavier because it's absorbing it. There's water and it's a water-based thing, so it's going to be absorbed more. So. I would say marginally heavier, but what the hell, is it going to make that much difference? Maybe not. So I went ahead and I did the same with the fuselage. And you can see this hasn't been rubbed down. It's pretty good. Pretty good. So if I was to rub that down here, it's a quick once over with that sanding block. And now that is silky smooth and good 
for applying a paint directly on. So that's what I'm going to use on the top surface of the wing. Um, things to watch. What it will do, because it soaks in more into the brown paper, it will certainly highlight any areas that haven't been stuck down to the underlying surface and you may get bubbles forming. Don't worry about that. If you see the bubbles, let it dry, go back to the same areas and you, I can almost guarantee that they will have gone. I had an area here that I notice, I noticed when I put it on earlier, it was bubbling up here. But now when I look at it, it's, it's all gone there. It's all stuck down firm, so I haven't got a problem. But of course, you can go over that with the iron again and just make sure it's 100% stuck down because the PVA will react, even though it's what a day or maybe longer since I applied the brown paper, that will still activate the PVA, believe it or not. So that's what I'm going to use to finalise the um, sealing of the brown paper. I'm going to use it. I've already done it on most of the fuselage. The tail end of the fuselage hasn't been done. Why? Because I've got to stick my tail feathers on, which is what I'm going to be doing next. Now there's something to note before you actually stick the tail feathers on, the tail plane in particular, make sure that you remove the brown paper from the areas where glue is going to be applied. Obviously you don't want to glue onto brown paper, you want to glue onto the substrate uh, material. So just I just ran an, a pencil down with the tail plane in to see where it, where it lines up on the fuselage. And then I cut to just inside the line you can see there and then peel back the brown paper and then if you want to get rid of um, all of it then you can just sand it down there and that will remove it all so you've got a nice balsa to balsa surface that you're gluing to with the fuselage. It's no different to uh, an ARTF, exactly the same thing you would do. So I'm going to glue that in place, making sure of course that the tailplane is level. So I've put the wing onto the fuselage and I'm just lining it up to make sure these are uh, level with the main plane. And then I'll be sticking the fin in place, making sure of course that is at 90 degrees to the flying surfaces. And there's the tail surface all stuck on, all pinned on, drying. So back onto the ceiling using the Dulux Materials laminating resin. You can see the brown paper does soak it up quite well. And I suppose really the other advantage of using laminating resin over paint is that if there are any uh, flappy bits of brown paper that you still come across, you haven't sealed, then you can use this and it will stick those edges down and seal them. So it's, uh, it's good in that respect as well. So let's just attack this last half of the wing or the last side of the wing here. It, like paint it provides an excellent surface to paint on so it does act as a it's not just a sealer it's a, whilst it's not colour priming it is priming the paper in other words it's going to stop the paper absorbing loads of paint 
you apply the paint on top of the paper rather than soak into it. So very similar. But the main thing from my point of view now, even though I'm working in the workshop and the actually the door's open because it's a nice day. You know, you've got to be a bit careful about the noxious fumes given off with spraying. So if you do use the spray, obviously be careful, wear protective gear, face mask, well ventilated space, all that. And of course, doing it with this, you don't need any of that. And you can wash your hands afterwards. And finally, the trailing edge there, just make sure that's all covered. And the wing tips are already done, that's good. So yeah, that's good now. Everything is sealed. I've just got to wait for that to dry. I said in an earlier video talking about the laminating resin. They say a 20 minute drying time. That's in favourable conditions to be quite honest. What I'll do is I'll, I'll let that go off for, I don't know, maybe an hour and I'll come back in and I may give it the old heat gun treatment over it just to make sure it's 100% dry. Um, yeah, and then we're then literally on to the painting stage for the wing uh, and with regards to the fuselage the tail feathers should be dry on that within a couple of hours it should all be ready for uh, coating up with the first layer of paint right then the time has come to put some paint on um, I'm using these paints being q two pound a pot I think two pound fifty something like that um, I'm just winging it I don't really know what sort of color but it's going to be a I'm going to go for a tropical color scheme which is like a sandy brown on top with some green um, <coughs> dark green and then underside is like a a gray blue color I think so this is the color that I'm going to use to start with um, who knows whether it's uh, correct or not we shall soon find out and if it's not you know what it's so cheap I can paint over the top of it again on the face of it actually the color looks looks to be mm, quite all right uh, anyway let's give it a go <clears throat> yeah it's going to need two coats as much as I thought it would do. I should be doing this on something that I don't mind getting paint on rather than my building board surface so I just put a bit of cardboard down. Yeah I think that colour, I'm liking this colour, it's pretty good. I'm painting the control horns as well. I haven't put the push rods in yet and the servo control horns. Um, I'm going to do that later. Normally, well certainly I will paint those in as well because I want to get everything coloured up so that they like, disappear. I'm making sure I'm getting in all the uh, bits and pieces. Yeah, I can see this bubbling up in a few areas already. But like I say, I'm not going to bother doing anything about it at the moment. There's bubbling up there, some of the paper is. Not too bad. <clears throat> if I was just to paint this and leave it as a painted finish, then that may cause a bit of a problem because in dampish weather 
you know, sort of early morning flying or late evening flying when you've got dew around, then that may cause a problem. That may cause the paper to sag as it has done over there. But I'm not going to leave this as just a painted finish. I'm going to give this a coat of sealer. And that is where I will be using floor varnish. It's cheap. Well, certainly if you get a non proprietary name, you know, if you go to something like Ron Seal, then yeah, you're going to be paying top notch for that. Whereas if you get a, a B and Q own make or something similar, then you're going to be paying a lot less. And the finish to go for, not the gloss, <clears throat> and not the matte, go for the satin finish because planes, Second World War planes, had a satin finish to them. They weren't obviously gloss, but they certainly weren't matte. And a lot of people make that mistake, I think anyway, of finishing their World War II models with a matte finish. No, sheen, a slight sheen is what you want on it, a slight barry. Um, and the satin finish is ideal for that. But of course what that will do is it will seal the surface, certainly waterproof it. It's arguable that this, this paint isn't that waterproof. Um, but personally, I haven't found a problem with it. It's not reacted to moisture in the air when I've used it before but there's no harm in putting a sealer on top of it just make sure I did do then there make sure you get in the hinge line because that will stick out like a sore thumb now, of course what I can do now if I want to give that another coat which I obviously do I can accelerate the drying process with a hot air gun, as I've got here, on low setting. You don't want to leave it too long on the surface, but at the moment I can see where it's wet because it's shining. If I go over with this, then it goes dull, and I know that is now dry. Of course, doing it this way means that I can get another coat on there immediately. My two coats on there. Right, so let's come back and give it another coat. Oh, that's good. That's looking good. If I was going to be really fastidious, I would do paint strokes the other way, but I'm using light strokes for this second coat. Because that way the brush marks just disappear. You've got to just love painting with ordinary emulsion paint. You haven't got to worry about it. And of course, because I've used the heat gun, there's some residual heat in the wing. And that's helping this coat go off as though I was doing it in summer. And of course, they're the ideal conditions to do your, your painting in the summer. 
uh, not just to do your painting, to do all your building, to be quite honest. But it ain't so cold. One thing I should point out, I don't know if you notice it, but you can hardly see where the bandage was in the centre section. That's because I did rub it down after I applied the um, sealer to it and I also gave it a light coating of that lightweight filler that I showed in a previous video. So I just gave it a light coating overall and the edges as well down there and that's why that bandage has more or less disappeared. Which is great. Okay, so there we have it, and that, to my mind, is pretty damn good. Pretty good. I love it. Can be a messy job, especially when you're picking the wing up, but it's emulsion, so it's just going to wash off. Yeah, that looks good. <laughs> 